I'm Daniel from Gut Void. I play guitar. I'm Brennan from Gut Void. I play guitar and do vocals. So our debut album is called uh, Durance of Lightless Horizons. It came out on Blood Harvest last September. If you haven't heard us, it's like death metal, but with some doom influences, some sneaky, like, proggy influences in there as well a little bit. Crips, Gorguts, Mortiferum, uh, you know, bands like that. had a rough idea, very rough idea of like what I kind of wanted the album to look like. Um, we all agreed like definitely painting, yeah. wanted like a big painting. We're all like huge into album art. We had like a, a roster of artists that we all loved, but the one, yeah, that like we were all like, yeah, like definitely this is a guy that we would love to work with if he's down is, is Adam Burke. We talked a little bit over email. Like I, I kind of conveyed the idea that I had, like, you know, talked with the, the band as well. And we all were on board. Um, you know, and just, I was like, yeah, like, you know, I said, there's this tiny theme of like, you know, imprisonment somehow. Um, but I see it kind of like, as like some like tower on fire by some water, like, you know, cause again, we, you know, there's a lot of amazing album art that's like very, um, I can use it explicit, but not explicit in the like graphic sense, but explicit, like, you know, here, like a Cannibal Corpse album cover, you know what you're getting. And like with us, we're like, well, you know, like I said, there's this like death element, there's this doom element, there's this kind of prog element. We want something that kind of was a bit more, um, like, you know, like atmospheric, like conveyed a feeling. Crips Remnants of Expansion album cover, where it's just, you know, the hand floating like in the cosmic void. It's like, that's sick. Like you look at that, you're like, what am I gonna get out of this album? It, it, it's, it's much more of a, it's a visceral feeling rather than a visceral reaction. The idea of something a little foreboding, a little mysterious, uh, really grabbed us and so when we spoke with Adam and gave the idea he's like this is great he sketched out and I like kind of sketched out what the album cover was uh, and it blew us away so we we were like because we're prog nerds we're like uh, oh can we have some easter eggs yeah. <laughs> from the from all the tracks on the album cover and so he like did a few tiny little touch-ups of like could you like change this one thing to like represent this song and like this and so you know there's if you look in the album cover there's there is an easter egg that kind of represents each song um and those are the only touch-ups it was because it was an afterthought you know but if we had told him that from the get-go he would have like done it and it would have been incredible yeah. and there was you know nothing he i can't can't express how happy and how fortunate we are to have, have gotten to have him do our album artwork yeah. and lastly we didn't put we consciously left out the logo so you could get the full effect I of when ask, yeah yeah it's, especially on the vinyl it, the gatefold so you open it up and you just see this incredible painting album artwork goes always always painting it's just like i said especially with with metal and death metal the the aesthetic the album artwork ties so it's so hand in hand with the music you need something that really fits with the whether it's the theme or the music or just the the, the atmosphere the feeling you're trying to convey and nothing beats at least i think nothing beats a painting like even the the ep artwork that carson did um you know that's painted the the single we did um forbidden city beneath the crypt carson also did but he did a yeah he did interesting technique yeah it, it, it was like a clay tablet that he etched out yeah and then uh i think he reversed the color because it was a yeah it was a white tablet and he etched out on black and it was reversed but it's like again it's a physical like etched out of clay kind of thing mm -hmm. and it's yeah um so yeah so this album uh durance of lightless horizons although it's not a concept album musically but also lyrically there's like that uh, tying theme that goes throughout which is kind of about like imprisonment in some form if it's like physical imprisonment mental imprisonment um you know historical imprisonment coils of gasoline filament which is the first track of the album was influenced initially by an hp lovecraft short story but it kind of talks about a group of people who were from you know some prehistory that we don't know about and we don't know about them because they worshiped some distant cosmic entity and through their worship it brought it to come to them and to you know take them away and keep them captive inside of it you know and it's it's like that like kind of occult mysterious like well why don't we know about them well because like they existed but it's a lost history because of like this 
you know, uh, spooky cosmic event. You know, each song I try to tell a story and try to have the lyrics, you know, both tell that story, but also tie into the music telling the story as well. What's kind of this music telling me? Like, what's what's the imagery I'm getting in my head? What's the, the thing that's that I want to, I feel like fits here to sing about? But the music, you know, I'm hoping also kind of conveys that same message um, of that, you know, inescapability of that, that kind of doomy atmosphere that, you know, when you're hearing it and you're reading the lyrics and, and you're experiencing it, it kind of gives that sense, that foreboding sense of, you know, oh, that I'm, I'm in whatever way it is, like I'm, I'm you know, trapped or I'm experiencing the trapped aspect of whomever the, the song is about. It's always great if the lyrics are some, obviously some death metal bands, they don't, you know, focus too much on the lyrics, but when the lyrics are good and the music is good, it just, it just, it just adds it's like icing on the cake. If the music is good and then the lyrics are good as well and they fit and uh, yeah, it just makes that whole album listening experience that much better. So Dan and I, we kind of uh, write most of the music, uh, like we'll, you know, as a band we'll get together and finalize it, but so far as like the, the main crux of the ideas of the songs go, Dan and I are doing it. So this album, some of it was written around the time we wrote our EP, Astral Bestiary. Um, and then some of it kind of came about after that, once we kind of got the full band together and kind of had a better idea of like, you know, what everyone's like strengths were and like backgrounds of like, you know, music background, like Dennis, our drummer, like he plays punk, but he also has like, does some grind stuff and Justin does grind stuff too. And so there's like a little bit of like, you know, if you listen to Skeletal Glyph, there's a bit of a grind influence there. So that, and that was the last song that we wrote. Um, so kind of the writing process was like that, a mix of things that Dan and I kind of were coming up with early on in Gut Void and then also kind of utilizing, um, you know, the cohesive unit as a band of Gut Void to kind of propel us to like, kind of be like, oh, well, what's the rest of the album we want to sound like? So we're trying to draw into the, I guess, dissonant sound, bring that in with like our Death Doom kind of sound. And uh, there's hidden like prog, so Rush, Dream Theater. It, it's not direct. You can't, but we kind of sneak it in. Yeah, again with the art, there's some light there, which to me is like maybe the more faster moments of this of the music, the energy, and then you you see transition to the dark, which is the doom 